This is going to be the backdrop. Um, I'm trying to uh, unwrinkle it. <laughs> Okay, this is taking much longer than I thought. I didn't realize ironing tablecloths would take so much. I think it's the material. It's just harder to unwrinkle. But I thought since we have a lot of time, perhaps I can also take some time answering. Um, some people have asked me questions, um, sometimes in person, sometimes by email. And I thought I should take this time to um, answer some of your questions. Hit two birds with one stone. And so, okay, question number one. Um, when I started, I didn't really start bookbinding with a view of starting a business. Um, actually, I was just at that time looking for a hobby that would really engage both my hands and my mind, learning something new. Um, it was during a time where when I was uh, grieving and having a hard time. Um, some of you might have seen my uh, testimony in my website, but when I first started bookbinding, I was really just looking for a, a therapeutic hobby. And so I taught myself using, well, watching YouTube videos, how to do bookbinding. And yeah, when I started, I just loved it. So I, I just kept doing it for a couple of weeks and then it turned to months and then eventually I thought hmm, maybe I can make start this into a business and so I did some research uh, asked around watch even more videos um, and yeah that's how it all began and the significance of amethyst stone is just like in line with what I was trying to achieve, which is to learn how to uh, take care of myself with mindfulness and um, achieve some calm within my life. And so, okay, Amethyst, I really like that. And I didn't want to call, uh, I'm, I've always been an artist. I, besides bookbinding, I also draw and um, paint and edit videos and a lot of other things and so I didn't want to limit my shop with just bookbinding and so I figured hmm if I make it a studio then I can kind of open it up make it more general and so in the future if I'd like to expand this business from book from bookbinding to other things it'll be possible and um, and I called it at the beginning I thought I'll call it amethyst studio but I kind of want to give it a little bit more flair. And so I looked up the French word for a studio and that's when I learned atelier. Um, and I thought, well, my name, Madeline, even though I'm not French, it's Madeline. This is kind of silly reason, but this is really what happened. My name is Madeline, a uh, French name. My husband's name is Guy in French, it's Guy. And so I figured, hmm, why not just call it Amethyst Atelier? And so Amethyst Atelier was born. That's First, I have to say that I would never claim journaling to be useful for everyone. Um, I feel like everyone is different and you know, what might work for one person may not work for the other and that's okay. Um, but if journaling is something you'd really, oh, let me fix the camera. But if journaling is something you'd really like to try, um, I guess the advice I'd give someone is well first you have to know that there is no one way of journaling um i know there's different kinds of journaling i know people they some people they do sketching um when they do journaling i've done that before too in the past i know i've heard of um dot, dotted journaling dot no that's not what it's called bullet journaling 
bullet journaling I have not tried that yet but I'm very interested in that as well um, some people do prayer journaling gratitude journaling there's so many different varieties out there and you know my advice is try out try it all out uh, find the one that works for you and what works for you nobody can define that except yourself um, that's my first advice my second advice is be yourself you know like I said there's not one way of journaling and so the best way to be honest is the way that would help you um, do the journaling that works best for you that meets your need uh, third advice is make it simple um, make make your journaling go simple don't like definitely don't start by aiming to journal every single day um, journal for as long as for however much it helps you like some people it helps them to journal every day so that's great but some people like myself I journal when I need to journal when I need some help um, to uh, organize my thoughts to um, deal with some um, emotions um, then that's when I journal sometimes Sometimes I even just use it to record something that had happened. Um, for example, if I've had some something, if I've experienced like, I guess like for example, if I've experienced a successful uh, moment for me, something that I would wanna go back and review later on to kind of encourage me and remind me of the things that I've accomplished and experienced, then I can always go back to my journal and see it and be encouraged again. And you know that doesn't happen every day. So I write, I write those things. I write when those things happen as they happen. So basically make it simple. Um, also, there's no such thing as, okay, journaling. For me to actually feel like I've actually journaled, I have to write at least a page or so. Um, sometimes journaling could just be one sentence or bullets of ideas. Uh, so I know some people do lists. Um, so yeah, just be simple. Don't pressure yourself into doing anything with journaling because honestly, that will defeat the purpose of why you even started journaling to begin with. Um, if you're stressing out about journaling, then I'd say that's probably how you can tell you're doing it wrong. I think that's the only way I would think someone would be doing it wrong is if they're stressing about it's kind of I guess the hardest thing is that as a business owner, you are wearing a lot of hats, a lot of different hats. Um, you're the business manager, you're the producer, you're the accountant, you're the marketing director, um, <laughs> you're the uh, purchase manager, um, what else have I missed? You're the um, research and development um, person, uh, you're pretty much basically you get what I mean you're everything and it's hard to manage your time and your energy and yeah I think that's the hardest part about it I guess for me the most rewarding part of it is I get to do what I love to do um, I love book binding um, I love art so I love being able to wake up every day and create things. Um, another um, good thing about owning your own business is you are in control of your own time. And so that actually can be a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. Um, it could sometimes feel like you don't have a structure with your day. You really have to take initiative and be, um, and, um, be on top of organizing your day, structuring your day. But at the same time, it's nice that you can take a break when you want to, when you need to. And Oh my gosh, guys, I think it took me three hours or so to do this. But thank you for watching with me. I hope I answered all of your um, questions adequately. If not, um, feel free to um, write down below any more questions you might have and I'll try my best to um, get back to you guys shortly. Um, have a good day.